All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Long Distance Running Pre-Competition webinar. Um, on the webinar tonight is myself, the Sport Director for Long Distance Running. Um, Kelly Cox, also on this list, was not able to join us, but she will be the Venue Director um, at the venue this year at Mount St. Mary's. She was uh, very monumental for the success of athletics at Summer Games this past year. Um, and has stepped up to be the event lead um, for LDR this year. So very happy to have her. Um, look forward um, to continuing that relationship with her in the future. Ron Freeman is expected to be back in the future. Also, uh, he's just tied up and unable to attend this year. Uh, also on the call is Steve Bennett, Senior Director of Sports and Competition. Um, and also listening in and working on some other stuff is uh, Mike Sarnowski, the Vice President of Sports. Uh, here's an agenda for tonight, the welcome introductions. Again, thank you everybody for joining. Um, as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded. Um, since there's not a ton of people here tonight, but there is a few, um, feel free to put your questions in chat or raise your hand and we will address them as we're going through it, um, just so you don't forget um, and we can address it and get you the answer that you need. Um, We'll be skipping protocol reminders that is not related to this year. The overall event information will be shared, um, which includes a schedule. We'll talk about entries and the venue. Um, and then we'll talk about some few random pieces at the end and leave it open um, for you to ask us questions about uh, Fall Fest, specifically related to long distance running. And I think um, just as a reminder, although we're not, we don't have any slides on the protocols, it's it's the same as it has been that we've set up during the preseason is uh, we're following local guidelines, um, as well as the state regulations um, and the facility at Mount St. Mary's in Fort Ritchie for fall. And at this time, there are no restrictions in place. Thank you, Steve. Um, some general information to start us off here, lunch and food services. Uh, thank you for getting those lunch forms into me. If you have not done so, um, the deadline is tomorrow. So please make sure to send those in so we can get your county's athletes the lunches that they would like to have. Uh, they will be delivered to each sport around uh, noonish or so. You also see that in the schedule. It may be a little bit earlier. Uh, I like to say noon just so people aren't uh, bugging you guys or us uh, about when lunch will be delivered. Um, once we get an idea, though, we will let you know as coaches. Uh, coaches will pick up all the lunches for their delegation as a group. Please don't come and just grab one or two for each of your athletes and keep coming back. We would like to distribute those all at one time uh, to simplify it for all of us. Um, they will be grouped together with your delegation um, along with your lunch slip that you have filled out. Um, so you can confirm that we have everything correct um, and you guys can have a great lunch. Uh, families and spectators, um, they are on their own for meals. Um, there will not be concessions available, so please send out an email or however you uh, prefer to communicate with your family and just remind them to bring their own food. Um, there's not a ton of places around the mount to buy food if it's your first time being up there. So I would uh, either grab something as soon as you're leaving your house or uh, pack something to go. In front of you here, you see the schedule for the day, slightly different than how it was last year. Um, delegation check-in will open at 8 a.m. Uh, the course will be open for inspection at that time also. Um, we will have opening ceremony at 9 a.m., which will go to 9.45 at the latest. Um, that will be in the Knot Arena, which is the basketball facility um, there at the Mount. It's also uh, where we have our powerlifting venue. Um, from there, 15 minutes later, again, we'll probably end before 9.45 a.m. Uh, please make sure your athletes are together and you're going down um, so we can begin the staging for the 5K race. Um, and as you can see there, we will go 5K, 3K, 1500 meter um, in the 1K. Um, once, um, anytime within that period, if lunch arrives and your athletes have time to eat lunch, um, please make sure that they do so. Um, and we do expect the venue to be closed by 1.30 p.m., if not earlier. So entries for this year um, are in front of you here. 
Uh, we did jump up, uh, especially within the 1500 meter race from eight entries, I think it was to 14. That was the biggest jump uh, for the rest of them that you see there. It did go up a couple. Um, I think we're around 85%, if I remember so, from uh, pre-pandemic numbers. So we're moving in the right direction. Uh, and let's strive to get back to that as soon as we can. We do have our three uh, typical programs participating this year, which is Howard County, Montgomery County, and Washington County. So here you see uh, the race course that we'll be using. Um, so the start for each of these races are the same. Starting off with the, uh, we'll go with the pink. You see that there. There is a pavilion. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, um, but the pink line starts kind of near that softball field and it's in front of the pavilion and that will be the 1K race course. Uh, the blue line is the 1500, which goes up and around the track area and comes back around the softball field, ending near that pavilion also. Uh, two laps around that will be our 3K course. And then the yellow, which you see going all the way around that pond uh, area up top is the 5K course, which is two laps around that. So again, we're starting with that 5K. We have volunteers positioned uh, all around that, those locations. It can be kind of confusing or with turns. Um, that whole course will be marked uh, with spray paint, um, but it'll also have some cones kind of directing athletes the correct way to go. And again, we do have volunteers to assist uh, with that. Looking um, at, go hey, ahead. Right. Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Um, you, if you were talking about the courses continuing, then I'll jump in after this slide. Uh, no, you're fine. Go ahead. Um, hey, Mike Sarnowski, if you're listening, if you could verify this, it's been a few years since we've um, had a normal, uh, if you will, um, non-COVID event, although it's not non-COVID, but for check-in purposes, I know you've helped out with registration, Mike, and we've typically had that upstairs in the um Horning Hospitality Room, or now is the long distance running um, room for, for the track team there at the, the Mount. Um, and that's where all sports would come. Their head coaches would all come to that area for check-in other than, of course, cycling, correct? That is what we have done in the past. That is correct. Okay. So, John, that would be the answer to your question. At this time, we, we would plan on having all coaches, all head coaches for each sport pick up the packets upstairs in the in the Horning Hospitality Room or the track and field room where our control center is on that upper level of the Knot Arena down the hallway. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Great question. Thanks, John. Uh, and Steve there. One other update, which was not captured in this Google Maps, is uh, after they pass that parking lot area, before they take the left on the far right side of that map, there is new tennis courts um, that are kind of slammed up against that parking lot there. They do not interfere with the course whatsoever, though. Um, but if you arrive on site and take a look around, you may notice uh, that difference there. Any questions with this map before we move forward? All right. So for the courses in competition, um, the course will be on a few different types of surfaces. Um, grass and gravel are the most common. Uh, the courses will be marked by the orange traffic cones and the signage like we talked about. Um, and the marshals will be present throughout the course. We call them course marshals, um, typically volunteers um, that we train morning of. Um, and then we start them out the 5K and kind of bring them in as the races uh, shorten. Um, each race distance will begin with a mass start. Each race will begin immediately following the conclusion of the previous race. Uh, we try to get the next um, event staged as soon as we can around that same area. Um, 10 minutes after staging, we then put them into the races. If we are ahead of schedule, uh, we'd like to continue to stay that way. So have this schedule with you. Uh, understand that it is tentative at this time. Um, but if we're ahead of schedule, we will be running races as soon as everybody uh, is ready there. Generally, if everyone's ready to go, like we said, we will start. Some real reminders for LDR here. Um, we'll use the mass start like we stated. All races will be started using a two command start. It'll be racers ready and then the firing of the gun. For unified races, athletes and partners are to run as a tandem pair 
please make sure that they finish within five seconds of each other uh, or they will be DQ'd. Um, a combined time of both of the athletes will be recorded as their official time, just like uh, what you did with your entries into GMS, uh, which again, were perfect this year. So thank you for your attention to that um, and attention to detail more specifically. Um, pairs may touch and hold hands, but carrying, pulling, uh, any action like that will result in the disqualification. Some real reminders, athletic shorts and pants are to be worn. Uh, no khakis, uh, denim or cut off shorts. During the competitions, athletes may not wear their medals, ribbons or name badges, headphones or jewelry. Um, the exception to that would be a medical alert bracelet or necklace, dud earrings and simple flat rings um, that aren't gonna impact the athlete or others around them. Um, if there's any questions related to that, please ask the starter uh, who will be very visible on site. Um, and they can answer those questions, whether or not something is deemed appropriate. Athletes in all the distance uh, events may wear a wristwatch or other personal timing devices to uh, allow them to kind of know where they're at. Athletes may not wear clothing with advertising on it during competition or awards. Uh, shoes, which are optional, uh, must be appropriate for the athletic competition. Uh, work boots or open-toed shoes are not permitted. Staging, uh, you'll check in with the clerk at the stated time. Um, ideally, have your athletes um, who are going to be up next around you earlier. Uh, staging will be in the general area of the starting line, which is located close to the pavilion. It typically starts um, a little bit before the pavilion, closer to the um, powerlifting arena there, where we're going to have opening ceremonies. Um, the athletes should be at staging ready to race. All right, the rain plan. Uh, don't even like talking about it because that's uh, when it happens. But uh, looking at the schedule currently, I think we had a high of 66 and a low of 49. Again, this is two weeks plus out. Uh, that's just their best guess at this time. Um, but again, it does get a little windy um, and a little cooler, in my opinion, at the mount uh, due to the location of the event. Um, so please make sure your athletes are dressed appropriately for that. It's easier to take clothes off um, than to put them on. If there is only rain, we will continue the competition. If there's thunder and lightning, we will move to the pavilion, um, and I will be in contact with um, the event lead down there, and we will uh, take appropriate action from there. We are in the uh, middle of working on an um, emergency plan for each of the venues, um, and if that does occur, everybody will be notified. So if you have a rain dance, John, it's time to do it if it comes up. Or a non-rain dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's a dumb phrase. Uh, prote protest procedures, uh, they need to be filed at the control center by the head coach within 30 minutes of the posted results. Um, the LDR control center will be inside of the pavilion. So that's where you can find uh, your protest forms. That is where you will pick them up and also return them. Again, please make sure that's within 30 minutes of the results being posted, which will also be at the pavilion. Um, only the uh, head coach can file protests. That should only say head coach, I believe, Steve, correct? Um, no, with uh, USA track and field, athletes in certain circumstances are permitted um, to file the protest. I don't know if there's anything you need to add on that, uh, Mike. No, other than it's a, a great development opportunity. Um, hopefully no one's in a position where they want to file a protest. Uh, but if they, um, they, uh, they wish to, uh, they can do that. I would advise, depending upon who the athlete is, uh, someone assisting them in completing the form. Uh, yeah. We've only had a few athletes who have filed protests, but it is a, uh, uh, a rule in USATF. Yeah, and I think uh, just to hit on that uh, topic, as far as the appeals, the appeals need to be filed there on site once the ruling on the um, protest is, is communicated to the either the coach or the athlete, um, and then the appeal is filed. Um, and then once the appeal has been received, we will have about 24 to 48 hours to address that. Um, pending um, the ability to convene uh, the Games Rules Committee. So 
appeals do need to be filed right on site as soon as you uh, get the notification of the protest if it was denied and if you so choose to then file an appeal. Thanks, Steve. Um, the results will be emailed out um, within two, three days after the event at the latest. Typically, they are out before. They will also be posted on the coaches resource page, which as will this webinar along with this slide deck, uh, so you're not having to write everything down. Um, the evaluation survey link is live and ready to go, uh, but that will be sent out post event along with um, a few different times, and I think we post on the resource page also. Please um, make sure that's filled out. I don't care if you like the event or if you hated the event. Uh, we want to hear your feedback. That's been really, really helpful in uh, making the events year after year uh, the best that they can be. And please know that if you write a long uh, paragraph in the comment box, it will be read. Um, and we do take each comment into account. Down to the miscellaneous part here, the water bottle distribution. Uh, there will be a single water station um, at the start and finish area located near the pavilion. Uh, for the three and 5K races, water will be available to runners as they cross the transition area uh, near the start and finish area. Uh, if you have any athletes with special needs, uh, accommodations um, that we need to be aware of before the race, um, preferably please have that emailed to me in advance so I can communicate with Kelly uh, so she has a list and uh, we're not surprised morning of, um, but also in doing so since I will be at the powerlifting venue, though Kelly will have uh, any communication I receive from you, please remind her um, and our team down there um, so they are uh, also second reminded. Um, so if you have athletes in other sports and you're kind of wondering who the best person to reach out to at this time is, uh, long distance running and powerlifting will be myself. Um, you have my contact information. If you have not been receiving emails from me, please notify me immediately. Um, the Director of Sports and Competition for Cycling, uh, Steve Bennett, uh, as we're looking to fill another sport director position. Um, and Melissa Anger will be overseeing flag football and tennis um, at Fall Fest. All right. Is there any questions from the webinar tonight? Ryan, it's Susan. Can you add me to your distribution list? Yes. Please. Of course. Thank you for saying something. Or you could call me. You're a very pleasant person to speak to on the phone. <laughs> With all my questions, you mean? That, you're fine. Yeah, we're happy to have you. <laughs> all right. Without any additional questions, I want to hit the next slide here and say thank you guys very much. As we always say for all of your hard work this season, um, now is time for your athletes to show off everything that they've learned from you, um, from others this year. Um, if you see anybody from the Mount, please make sure you thank them for all of their efforts also. Uh, we really appreciate the partnership that we have with them. Um, Spectator-wise, come to think of it, I don't think we discussed that too much. Um, anybody who was around for uh, last year or the year before, I think we had spectators across the parking lot that uh, we will not be enforcing this year. There will be a spectator area um, also include a map to make this a little easier to understand if this explanation isn't clear um, that kind of goes out towards the back of the pavilion like we did in the past. Um, so it'll allow them plenty of space to see the event without being in the race lanes, um, but they will be outside of the pavilion. Uh, but we do want to ensure that our spectators have a great experience also um, and able to see their athletes compete at the highest level. All right, with that, we will wrap this up. Thank you, uh, everyone, for your time tonight. Again, you'll receive an email from me tomorrow uh, with this webinar slide deck and the recording. I look forward to seeing you all on October 22nd at Mount St. Mary's. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, Ryan. Steve, can you hang for a minute after the recording's off, Steve? Yeah. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye, Susan. Thank you. See you, Sue. Bye. Ryan, you can hang too.